Next, we've got pocket aces in the hijack. I raised a 50. My friend Aaron, who's an extremely good player, but also a complete maniac, three bets a 200 from the button. That's not a typo in his starting stack. He actually has 30,000 in front of him. You may remember Aaron from previous vlogs. He once gave me 800 to play 1020 for my first time ever at Bellagio. We also went to Houston together a few years back and he bought a stuffed animal giraffe from me for $1,000. He's always happy to do kind of wild things to make videos more interesting, including aggressively three betting me. He's done it quite a few times this session already in hands when I couldn't call. I'm not calling this time either. I four bet to 700. Aaron has a terrible hand that he should have never gotten involved with in the first place. He announces a fold, mostly because for some reason, he thinks that I'm not filming. Listen closely to the table talk, it's pretty interesting. It's on, of course. Huh? Uh, what? Yeah, it's on, it's on. No, I'm right, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really not? It's why would it not be on? I don't know, I, that's why I asked first. It's always on. Yeah. I mean, I definitely would have. These are not two cards you want to be. Well, let's see a flop. Let's see what the flop would have been if I had to really would have played this hand. But I was really doubled yeah, right off for sure. Oh, wow! Wow! <laughs> that would have been so gross. Oh my God. Yeah, Jesus. Classic. Yeah, I gotta see the run out. Sure, let's see the run out. Let's see the run out. No, there's no shot. No shot. Yes. Aaron would have flopped bottom two pair if he called. I would have gotten bailed out on the river with the board pairing the queen. We for sure would have gotten it all in on either the flop or the turn since I wouldn't have had much behind if he had called the $700 four bet. Here we pick up Queen Deuce of Diamonds in the straddle. Aaron raises to 50 in middle position. Call the authorities. There's about to be some friend on friend crime. I call for 30 more. We're heads up out of position. The flop comes Ace 10 Deuce with two clubs and one diamond. We've got bottom pair and some backdoor draws. I check. We face an instant $30 bet. I consider check raising as there are a lot of cards that can help me out on future streets, but instead I call with plans of possibly check raising the turn. That's what I usually do against Aaron with big hands anyway. The dealer puts out the six of diamonds, giving us a flush draw. I check. Aaron blasts away for 450. It's about two and a half times the size of the pot. Being out of position against this dude is no fun. I played with him since I first moved to Las Vegas in 2012. I've seen him make similar plays with a lot of drawing type hands, especially gut shot straight draws. I'm worried that if I call in brick, Aaron will bet big again on the river and I'll have to fold. I honestly don't think that he'd bet this much if he had a set or two pair or even top pair. I haven't been in this situation too many times in my life. I'm not 100% sure what to do. Because the opponent and I have a decade of history, I take a very obscure line and raise to 1100 as a semi-bluff. I'd probably play sets of 10s and deuces this way, as well as ace-10, ace-6, and ace-deuce suited. Aaron knows that I like to take advantage of his aggression by trapping him, and he's understandably perplexed. He gets changed for one of his 5k chips from a neighbor. He doesn't appear to want to fold. I only have about 2,000 behind. If he has anything decent, he's going to jam on me. Instead, he just flats, somewhat strengthening my suspicion that he's on a draw. It's likely a good one though. Perhaps he has a combo draw like King-Queen, King-Jack, or 8-7 of clubs. I just really want to hit a diamond. Another deuce would be even better. Sometimes in life, we don't get what we want though. The dealer puts out the Jack of Hearts. We completely brick everything. I have a few thoughts going through my head right now. The first is, why did I get myself into this situation? The second is, I'm not 100% sure a bluff attempt will get through if my opponent was trapping me or somehow connected with the jack to make a straight or two pair. My third thought is that I've got a pair so I don't necessarily have to continue bluffing because I could be good if Aaron also missed a draw. I check, really wanting to see a check back. And guess what? We get it. I turn my hand over thinking there's about a 50-50 chance that we're best. Is it good? Yeah, it's fucking good. This is so dumb. <laughs> See it, Aaron. What do you want from me? Wait, wait to the camera. Are you slow rolling me? I feel it's like you're slow. Good. <laughs> Push in the box. It's good. Put your cards back. Aaron shows for the vlog that he had king nine of clubs for a missed flush draw. Him and I are good enough friends that it wouldn't be out of the realm for him to slow roll me. He's done similar things in the past, which is why I was so adamant about him mucking his cards before being able to enjoy the win. That was a bizarre hand in which we somehow get the maximum. I go over it with Nick Petrangelo later, who said it was okay, probably just to be nice. He spends a lot of time in Canada where their politeness could have rubbed off on him. He also added that check raising the flop or flatting the turn bet are reasonable plays as well. An hour of being card dead goes by before we pick up pocket queens and the hijack. We're going to be playing it. I raised a 50. Aaron, who 3-bet earlier and considered calling a 4-bet with 6-2 suited without even having the revenge range activated, 3-bets here to 200. 
After getting him with Queen Deuce and him losing some big pots to some other players at the table, I can't imagine what his 3 bet range looks like now. It may even include 5 deuce offsuit. With his range being so wide, I'm going to 4 bet a much wider range myself that easily contains pocket queens. I make it 700. We raise to 700. His ships get in there at the same time mine do. He's got very little regard for money at the moment. His primary objective is to wreck my world and then have me make a video of it. Despite him being incredibly wild, he's not an idiot. And sometimes he'll have a legitimate hand that ends up being incredibly strong. It's scary when that happens. We don't have this in the bag yet, especially because the flop comes King Jack 3 with two hearts. We've got second pair on a coordinated board. I don't want to check and give control of the pot to Aaron. I down bet to 500. I'd do this with a set of kings and jacks. I'd also do this with aces, ace king, ace queen, and a variety of other combinations. We know that my hand isn't great, but Aaron doesn't. In fact, this board is still really good for my range, so if he was trying to get me with a smaller medium pocket pair or smaller medium suited connectors, this $500 bet should get him to abandon ship if he doesn't have hearts or maybe clubs. We don't take it down with a small bet. Aaron calls, indicating that he at least has something. The turn is the eight of spades, now I'm not sure what to do. I don't want this pot to continue getting larger. Ideally, I'd like to get the showdown as cheaply as possible. I really have one of the worst hands that I'll ever have given how this has been played so far. I check. Again, I'd like to see a check back. That's not Aaron's style. He senses weakness and bets 1400. If I call, I'll have 1600 in my stack. I don't see how I'd be able to fold to a river jam. I could be drawing to two outs if I'm up against any king or a set of jacks. I'd only have one out if I'm up against king queen. He'd probably check back king queen though. I have plenty of other hands that'll do better on this board. I could be getting bluffed by a heart draw or some kind of straight draw, but I might be absolutely crushed as well. I reluctantly fold to live another day. Aaron doesn't want to show both cards this time. He shows one though, and it's the nine of hearts. He might have taken a free river card with king nine of hearts. It looks like we got bluffed by a flush draw of some sort. Aaron showed the neighbor on his left mid hand what he had, and they both later tell me that it was nine seven of hearts. Aaron had a flush draw and turned a gut shot straight draw to go along with it. I got semi bluffed, but we didn't know where we were at. We needed to fade a ton of river cards. A heart was almost 100% coming to devastate me. A half hour goes by, then we pick up eight four clubs in the big blind. I call for 10 more. Rain delays in the straddle. He raises to 80. Let's refer to the blind versus blind preflop chart that Nick Petrangelo put together for the upswing cash game course that'll be out in a few weeks to see how we should play this hand. We'll say that I'm the small blind in this instance, and when it's not opened, I'm supposed to be limping with 8-4 suited like I did. When we face a raise from the big blind, or in our case a straddler, we should be calling with 8-5 suited and 7-4 suited. At least that's when it's a 3x raise. We're facing a 4x raise, so we should be playing potentially a little more snug than that even. But 8-4 suited isn't too far out of the suggested range. I don't have accessibility to this chart mid-hand. I make a slightly wider call than I should. We're heads up, out of position, and the flop comes king-8-4 all diamonds. We've got bottom two pair on kind of a weird board. I check. Rain delay tosses out 100. I'm conflicted on whether to check raise or not. I call a bit for deception and a bit so that this pot doesn't get out of control. If my opponent has any diamond, he'll be in decent shape against me anyway. If he has two diamonds, I'm smoked. The turn is the ace of clubs. It's better for the opponent's range. I check. Rain delay doesn't let up. He bets 320. I'm not sure if he really has a strong hand or if he's just trying to keep the pressure on since I played this passively so far. I don't see any reason to check raise at this point. I call again. The river is the jack of spades. It's another high card that's generally going to be better for the preflop raiser. I check. Maybe we can get another river checked back. Nope. Under the gun bets 560. This is a very annoying spot. Initially, I wasn't planning on folding to any bets. No more diamonds came on the Turner River. The additional Broadway cards coming out have made this more difficult for me. When the opponent bets all three streets, bottom two pair is only a bluff catcher since I don't really be anything that he'd take this line with for value. You saw me incorrectly bluff catch early on in the session with Ace Jack. Usually when I call in these situations, I'm wrong. It's just so hard for me to let go. I tank for about a minute and 20 seconds before finally coming to a decision. Fold. Nice hand, nice hand. Rain delay doesn't show what he had, but he'd later tell me that he had me beat and I made a good lay down. That makes me feel better. What doesn't make me feel better is the fact that I'm currently losing $1,000 and it's getting pretty late. We've got 8-6 suited in the big blind. The hijack min raises to 40. This is an odd amount. The small blind who's been 3-betting a lot makes it 120. This is another really small sizing. My sense is that neither player is all that strong. I could easily wait for a better hand to get involved, but on a scale of 1 to 10, that wouldn't be very fun. My image is good since I've only 4-bet with hands at the top of my range so far and I haven't even 3-bet in some situations that I could have. I take advantage by putting in a cold 4-bet to 400. 
Usually, we'd want to do this with an ace in our hand. Today, we're living on the edge. This move will look a lot like aces, kings, queens, ace, king, and then some ace, queen, or ace, five through ace, deuce suited occasionally as bluffs. I expect it to get through for me pretty often. It doesn't this time. The hijack calls for 360 more, then the small blind calls for 280 more. This is a rare four bet multi-weight pot. My perception of the hijack's min raise must have been way off. It might even be trapping with aces. If not, you could have another strong pocket pair like kings, queens, or jacks. Small blind on the other hand will probably never have aces. You could have other strong pocket pairs though. We're going three ways to the flop. It comes ace five three with two hearts. It's pretty terrible for our actual hand, but it smashes our range, including the hands that we should have been 4-bet bluffing with. What doesn't do well on this flop is the hand that I actually chose to 4-bet bluff with. We've got nothing except a backdoor straight draw. At least any deuce, 4, 7, or 9 will help us improve. Small blind checks. I take a stab at it for 500 like I would if I had aces, ace-5, ace-king, and ace-queen. You saw me also bet this amount in a 4-bet pot with queens on a king-high board previously. My bet doesn't necessarily mean much by itself, but I'm hopeful that this could get most pocket pairs that miss sets to fold. The hijack is thinking for a very long time about what to do. It doesn't seem like he's contemplating a raise. It feels more like he doesn't want to fold a mediocre hand for only 500, but I'm not the only person that he has to be concerned about beating right now. He still has another opponent in the small blind that he has to consider. After a minute of tanking, the hijack calls. There's no reason for him to tank that long with aces if he was trapping preflop. You'd think that his decision would be easy, and he'd call somewhat quickly to continue setting the trap. Instead, the hijack at least appeared to be genuinely on the fence about whether to call or fold. I don't think that he's that good of an actor. If he is, he deserves an Oscar for nailing the subtle things that players do when they're making difficult decisions. The hijack might have something like kings or queens, and it's just calling one time for a relatively small amount to see how the rest of this hand plays. Small blind folds immediately. It's down to heads up in a pot that's already large. The turn is the queen of spades, making things very interesting. Again, I can have a ton of strong hands, including aces, queens, ace, queen, ace, five, and ace, three. After seeing my opponent tank when facing a flop bet, coupled with the fact that he didn't five bet preflop, I've ruled out him having aces and significantly discounted him having ace, king because those are pretty straightforward calls to make on the flop. He probably has ace, queen suited, kings or queens. There are two combos of ace, queen suited, and there are three combos of queens that the player could have for a total of five combinations that'll never fold if I take one more shot as a bluff. Meanwhile, there are six combinations of pocket kings that my opponent will have to auto muck if I bet again. Even if my read on the flop was wrong and the opponent has ace king, he's not going to like seeing me put more money in the pot because he'd be calling to basically chop at best. There's also some tiny chance that the hijack has a hand like jacks, with 11 total combinations that are the most likely ones that my opponent will have, and me surmising that he'll fold six of them. I put in another borderline suicidal bluff attempt, announcing a bet of 1400. Yep. Take the hell off that. 1400. It doesn't get much more interesting than this. I'm putting almost everything on the line. If we can win the pot half the time or more, it's a great play because we're risking 1400 to win 2200. I can talk about my reads on situations all day, but in reality, I'd never suggest that anyone put themselves in this position. I've invested 2300 in a hand that I had no real business being in in the first place. If I get called here, I'll have 1700 in my stack and I'll have to shut down on the river. That means I'll be stuck 3300 on the session. I don't have too much time to consider how bad I'll feel if I lose because the opponent snap folds, we get the Hail Mary bluff through in the clutch. Our line looks like we have the nuts or something close to it, when really, we get lucky to take down a large pot with only eight high. It's difficult to put into words how relieved I am to immediately get the fold, but you can see my hand shaking as all the adrenaline is coursing through my body. This one gets us above the even mark, and that's where we're going to stay. We've got 5,300 in front of us. I'd play for another half hour without getting involved in any more interesting hands. After getting out of the hole initially, and actually being up 1,300 for only a few minutes, then getting stuck 2,000, I'm more than happy to rack up a small win, get out of a very tough game unscathed. 